Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Slay the Spire. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a great day. Oh, I'm on Ascension mode, and I don't want to be. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, is it possible to make it to an elite? It is possible. Sure, I guess we're doing Ascension as the Silent. I wasn't intending to. But if we can make it to this elite without... Uh, it, basically, all three of these would have to not be uh, combat. But it is possible. But if nothing else, we'll have easy combats until we get to the elite. Uh, sure. Infinite Blades right off the bat? Don't mind if I do. What do we got in here? Might be going for a shiv deck. We'll see. I think you go card removal. And you remove a basic strike. This is not combat. This is good. Uh, I'm going to lose 5 max HP. We get golden idols. So we're going to be... Enemies are going to drop more gold. Upgrade 2 random cards and lose 13 HP. Okay. We'll do it. Maybe not the right call. Just don't be combat. It's not combat, dude. We're going to make it to the elite without having to uh, fight. We're going to get a free elite fight, basically. Um, sure, we'll take footwork. So now we go here. Smith. Upgrade. Infinite blades. So we start with it. Swing up here. This dude's going to have one HP, so he'll die very easily. Wow, almost didn't draw a single attack on the first turn. That would have been horrible. Um, and yes, I will take another footwork. The more dexterity, the better. And we get our free elite fight, where all these guys only have one HP. So, strike, strike, and strike. It's essentially a free relic. And three uh, easy combats as well. Terrible relic. I really think this is like one of the worst relics in the game. Uh, accuracy, on the other hand, when I'm rolling infinite blades, is not at all bad. And ginger is amazing. That's a great relic. So I think at this point we want to kind of try and avoid some of these elites. Because the silent is, you know, kind of strong, but not ridiculously strong. So you want to play infinite blades. I mean... I think you want to play... Man, what I really want, I want to play my entire hand is what I want to do. I'm actually going to play an energy potion here so we can play accuracy. And then we'll play footwork and a defend. And then we'll strike the one that makes us weak. And then we can finish him off with a shiv. I mean, I can't complain. Getting accuracy and infinite blades in the same turn is pretty solid. Uh, especially on a turn where we did not draw any other attacks. So, okay. Defend, defend. Why not? You cannot get through my massive amount of block. I'm impervious. So we're going to neutralize. We're going to st shiv, strike, strike. You're dead. Okay. Um... I think I want to skip all these. Swing up here. Again, and again, we draw like all the powers on the first turn. Um, so let's go footwork, footwork. And then play a survivor. We'll take no damage. The thing with the silent that I've noticed is that, like, it takes a little bit to kind of get going with the silent. Like, the nice thing about the ironclad is that you can get, you know, two or three cards and you've got a great combo. Whereas the silent, like, the silent's best uh, combo decks, I, I think, for the most part, are all very, like... It takes a while to play all the necessary cards. You know, you got, like... Infinite Blades and Accuracy, for example, you know, they go well together. 
but they only do so, you know, you have to draw them both first, and then you have to play them both, and then you start getting shivs, and like, really, you should have two accuracies for it to really be worth it, and two infinite blades, and it's like, eh. Whereas the ironclad, you know, you get like, I don't know, spot weakness, limit break, and headbutt, those three cards, and you could basically kill everything. So, I don't know. Pros and cons, I guess. I think that's maybe why I struggle with the the uh, silent a bit more, is because it takes more to kind of get those super combos. There we go. So he's going to split. We do have a couple of campfires before the final boss. Or before the boss. These guys are not going to split again. So Shiv... I'm not going to be able to kill one. So we'll do it this way. Take no damage. Be smart. And the fact that these guys can't weaken me is actually awesome. That relic. Super useful. Uh, I think you're dead. Yeah. They do keep putting wounds in my deck, which is annoying. But like, lick? Whatever. Lick me all you want. I'm immune to weakness. Wow. Wow. Awesome hand. Just the best hand. So good. Nothing but wounds. It's like... A th yeah, nine wounds in my deck, and I drew four of them on one turn. And that's just typical. Anyway, that's fine. So we'll do this. Uh, I will take a... Quick Slash, I think. And we'll go to the campfire. And I think we'll upgrade Accuracy. Makes our shivs considerably more worth it. This is a really bad uh, first turn for me. So we'll go infinite blades, accuracy, and then survivor, I think. I really need a way to get more energy. Even if it's just like energy on the first turn of combat. But our shivs are now going to do nine damage each. And that's without any sort of a strength bonus. So let's go neutralize shiv. Footwork. Play a defend to block most of the damage, and then we'll quick slash the wizard. We'll take one damage. We're definitely going to want to rest at the campfire before the boss. And this guy wants to hit for like a million damage, so kill him, play footwork, play a defend, we block all the incoming damage, and I think we're now kind of ahead of the curve. And we basically get nine free damage per turn from having the shiv plus accuracy, which is very good. So one, hit you with that, hit you with that, and then throw out a block. Oh, you're not dead? Excuse me? How are you not dead? I guess I just can't math. I thought for sure he was dead. Well, that stinks. I would have played a different block. I guess that's what I get for not paying attention. Uh, all right. You're dead. And we would do 9 plus 6. That's 15. Yeah, whatever. So smack him, smack him, smack him. Throw in another block. We'll block all the damage. And now he is going to die on the next turn. And we're definitely going to need to rest. We should, I think we'll heal back up to like the mid 50s or so. Which is not amazing, but it could be worse. Sure. I don't know how many footworks you need in your deck, but we've got plenty of them. We have so many footworks. So let's go infinite blades. Footwork, footwork neutralize end the turn so now we got four decks we got infinite blades up and rolling definitely want to play accuracy so shiv this guy and then I think you want to go I mean we need to kill this guy like he needs to die so strike him and let's actually use our block potion here. I 
There we go. And you are dead. So there's our biggest problem dealt with. And he's a problem because he just keeps getting stronger and stronger every turn. And now that that's dealt with, the rest of this fight should be fairly simple. So play that. Smack you with that. Smack you with that. We got six decks. It's going to allow us to block a lot of damage. And I think you are dead right here, my friend. Indeed. I don't think we need another footwork. <laughs> we've, we've got three of them in our deck already. That's probably too many. But whatever, you know? Maybe we'll find some way to make that work for us. Uh, we are going to pop our regen potion right off the bat. And actually, we got infinite blades, accuracy, and footwork on the first turn, which is about as good as I could have asked for for a first turn draw. Now he's going to come out swinging. He's going to hit us for a, an absurd amount of damage, but we can neutralize him. That reduces it significantly. And then we can shiv him. We'll play footwork. We'll play a defend. And then I think you play... What do we got left in our deck here? I think you play outmaneuver. Because we're going to have that other uh, footwork coming up. Probably. The odds are better than not. He just hit us for a ton of damage. So we definitely want to play footwork. We want to shiv. We want a quick slash. Survivor alone will block all of that incoming damage. So let's do this. Strike. There we go. I think we're in a good spot. We got nine free damage per turn. We got six dexterity. I think we're good. So defend, outmaneuver, strike. Makes a pretty big difference when you can just uh, essentially kill him. <laughs> or uh, block all of his incoming damage with one card. Like, that helps pretty tremendously. And the regen potion's actually helping quite a lot as well. Alright, he's gonna make himself stronger. Uh, I can still block all of his incoming damage with one card. And we're slowly whittling him down. We need some uh, hitting power in this deck. Or a way to get a lot more shivs or something, but... Shiv. Um, strike. Play out maneuver. Throw to survivor. But we need some sort of, like, finisher. Or a way to just get a lot more shivs. One or the other. Either would be acceptable. So, shiv him. Quick slash. Eh, it's pretty bad. But it's fine. We have the, the blocks to counter the burn. And now he's going to hit his big nasty attack. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, we only have three energy. And I'd really like to prevent all of this damage. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. I think this also puts four burns in our deck. Yep, three burns. Which actually is pretty bad, because we have a fairly small deck, so we're going to start drawing burns on the regular, which I'm not super happy about. But I think it'll be okay. Um, play outmaneuver and strike. And, you know, if nothing else, we still have the Swift Potion, too. So if we go into a turn where we have a lot more energy or something, we can always play the Swift Potion if we don't have the cards we want. So Shiv, Strike. We'll do that. He's down to 67 HP. We're getting there. So at most, he's going to live, like, six turns. At the very most. And I don't think he'll even live that long. Looks like we're dealing about 15 to 20 damage per turn, depending on what we draw and what he's, you know, whether he's attacking or blocking or whatever. Like, this turn is going to be a little better. So, shiv him. Quick slash him. Strike him. And then just throw out a defend to block the burns. 
He's down to 32. Throws out some block. So we can get through his block for free. We'll hit him there. I mean, getting him down to... What do we have left in the deck? Mostly birds. So let's go outmaneuver. Throw up a block. Because I'd like to be able to play all of my blocks and everything. And maybe we'll use the swift potion. If necessary. Yeah, he wants to hit for 18 here. Make that 12. There we go. And we'll block all the damage. He is probably done next turn. Maybe. Yeah, he's definitely done next turn. Because I'll have 9 from the shiv and 6 from the strike. So, my friend, you are done. That went well. We got an ascension floor kill. Look at that. Um... I don't think any of these are what we want. We definitely don't want Sneko Eye. We definitely don't want Velvet Choker. Orrery? Sure. Choose and add five cards. Now, the nice thing is you can actually skip these cards. So if you look at these and you go, ah, these are all pretty bad. I'm not interested. You can also go back to them. So you can, like, see what all's here before you decide... And then make a decision from there. So I definitely... I love Dagger Spray. But I think Cloak, Cloak and Dagger is definitely the one we need. Um, I think Flying Knee is what we need as well. And then I think you go Backflip, Backflip, and nothing. So we've thickened up our deck a bit. But I think all the cards we drew were worth it. And we're going to want to be removing some, uh, like, defends and uh, strikes and stuff like that from our deck. So let's see. We have any of these. Any of these options all give us the same amount of campfires. If we go this way, we get an additional one. Or if we go this way, we get an additional one. Here we would get one right before an elite. Here we would get one instead of an elite. And here we would be able to go around. I kind of like this way, because then we once we hit the shop, we can decide if we want to fight that elite or not. So let's kind of go up this way, I think. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Here we go. So we want infinite blades. Oh, we're at full HP, so we actually get four energy. This is probably the only time that this relic is going to do anything for us. I'm so excited. Uh, defend. Defend. Strike. Didn't even get through his armor, which is honestly to be expected. I wasn't expecting to get through his armor. We're going to get an infinite blades now, though. So we get a shiv at the start of every turn. Uh, let's go footwork, footwork. Neutralize. You might as well shiv him. And then we'll go backflip, draw two cards. And we do get flying knee, so we'll smack him there. That'll get rid of one of his plated armor, deal one damage, which is like nothing. But it's a start, and we get a little more energy. We get five energy on this turn, so accuracy. Foot footwork again. Play cloak and dagger, that blocks all of his damage. And then we can start hitting him for nine damage with our shivs. Smack him with Quick Slash. We've already blocked everything, so we'll smack him with a strike. And now we're getting somewhere. <clears throat> Very nice. All right. Free Shiv. Uh, let's play a backflip. Let's see what we draw. Hit him with a Quick Slash. Hit him with uh, throw out a Cloak and Dagger. Get another nine free damage. Hit him with a strike. We're blocking all of his damage, and we dealt a considerable amount. And now our Shiv will actually get through his armor every turn, so we're guaranteed to actually deal damage. He wants to hit for 18. All right, let's neutralize him. Uh, play a backflip, see what we draw. We did not draw what we needed to block everything, but that's okay because he is dead. Choke, actually, in a Shiv deck? can be really good. If you get enough Shiv cards, it can be so good. 
And this is a horrible starting hand. I think we drew every block in our deck, <laughs> except for one on the first turn. That's so terrible. Uh, we're actually going to Swift Potion, I think. Let's play a Dex. Hit him with the Strike. There we go. So now, like, most of the cards left in our deck are attacks, which isn't necessarily bad, but... But every time we, we play a non-attack card, he's going to hurt us. So here, we've got a ton of energy. So I think you start with the choke. And you play accuracy. Then you play footwork, footwork. So this is putting days in our deck like crazy. And then survivor blocks all his damage. Choke ended up doing uh, quite a bit of damage to him there. So that worked out. And he's not attacking, so let's quick slash. Shiv him. I th think we want to go backflip, which puts a daze in our deck, but also allowed us to draw one. And then we do the same thing again, just to see what we get. There we go, that's a little better. So then we'll flying knee. And that'll get rid of three days out of our deck. We're going to draw three days next turn, which stinks, but... <laughs> on a turn when he's doing 31 damage, no less. So neutralize, shiv, strike, and you know what? We're gonna hit him with the explosion, the explosive potion to finish that off, because I don't really want to just take 20 damage for no reason. All right, or 24, or whatever it was. Duplicate a card. Ooh. I think you gotta duplicate infinite blades. Like, that seems really good, especially since it's already upgraded. Like, we're going to start every combat with two infinite blades in our hand. That's pretty solid. And we only have four HP, or four energy here. And they want to hit for 12, 19? That's a lot. So I think you go infinite blades, infinite blades. We're not going to stay at full HP forever. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so then you play Footwork, and then you play Backflip. And then you end the turn. So we're going to get hit here for 12, basically. The problem with this Runic Dota Cahedron is that, like, it just is so hard to enable. Unless, at least as the Silent. If you're the, uh, the Ironclad, it's not as bad, but it's still pretty bad. All right, Choke. Shiv, Shiv. Hit it with a Flying Knee. And probably should have thrown up some blocks there, but we did some huge damage to the slaver. And once we get rid of the slainer, the slaver, like, we should be okay. I dislike the fact that we've basically lost half of our health on this one fight, but... Um, can I kill this guy? I can. Where is this stupid accuracy? All the way down there, huh? So, let's see. 9, 13. Yeah, this will kill him. So, go strike, shiv... Neutralize this dude. Shiv him again. Play an outmaneuver. Play a defend. Play the other defend. We take no damage on this turn, finally. But that was not a good fight for us. We kind of... I think we kind of mishandled that. Finally got accuracy. We're going to play Cloak and Dagger. Shiv, Shiv, Shiv. Quick slash him. Play another Cloak and Dagger. Shiv him again. And then play Survivor. See, that's the thing. Once you actually get the combo up and rolling, like, you can do some crazy damage, but... Problem is getting the combo up and rolling. Okay, he's at 29. So smack him with that. We are not going to be able to kill him this turn. We'll take one damage, so I can deal six. I think that's fine. And then hopefully we can finish him off on the next turn. Yeah, he's definitely dead. Some way to heal. A uh, regen potion's pretty good. Some way to heal would be great. And Venom actually can be really good in a poison or in a shiv deck, honestly. We're going to want to fight that elite. Although that terrifies me considering we're at half of our HP right now. Uh, infinite blades, infinite blades. Strike him. And you know what? This fight is probably going to go on long enough for me to get the full benefit of the regen potion. 
And if we could, I'd love to fight the elite without having to heal first. Now, the advantage of infinite blades is that uh, it adds the shiv. It doesn't count as a draw. So this, like, confusion doesn't matter. But we'll play accuracy. I definitely play a free cloak and dagger. Uh, then we'll hit him with the flying knee. Strike, strike, strike. Or uh, shiv, 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 and then strike. We'll take two. I think he makes us vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, I will take up two free backflips for sure. Uh, I will take a free footwork as well. Then we go in Venom. Another free block. We'll play a Cloak and Dagger. And we'll go Shiv, Shiv, Shiv. It's going to put three poison on him. And we're doing okay. Twenty-two damage, huh? Okay. Well, I can only block... I can block seven. That's not enough. All right, shiv, shiv. Wow, that's pretty bad. Um, so I mean, they're ba basically there goes our regen potion. Like, <laughs> we lost all benefit of using the regen potion from this one turn because we just didn't quite hit him. We we didn't kill him fast enough. Because even if I hit him with new, I mean, I suppose I could hit him with neutralize, and he'd lose twenty five percent of his damage, but we'd be better off blocking. The problem is that all of these cards cost at least two. So I think we'll just throw out a defend. And we'll just accept that he's dead like next turn. Man, that stinks though. That's too bad. Yeah. Ah, it almost went well. Draw four, discard one for one energy? I mean, that's... The fact that it's already upgraded is pretty good, but I think we're just going to skip these. And then we're going to go here. I think you definitely have to sleep. You got to rest. As much as I don't want to. And the Book of Stabbing. The, the, the Book of Stabbing has apparently been reworked somehow. I'm not sure how, but it apparently has. We're going to use our Dex Potion here. And then I think... Man, I wish I had a little bit more energy. I think you want to go backflip to start with. And then I think you want to go infinite blades, infinite blades. So we're going to get hit for five. Which will put a wound in our deck, I believe. Uh, goes to our discard pile. All right, we did get accuracy up, which is huge. Because that's our primary like damage dealing method right now. Play backflip, see what you get. And I think you want to go Survivor. And block most of this damage. When's our next campfire after this? Either of the... This way, right here. Okay. We'll probably have to rest at that one, too, actually. These, uh, these elites are giving me some problems. 21 damage. Man. Can you stop with the massive quantities of damage? Like, killing me here. Uh, what are we going to draw next turn? Some stuff that we will want energy for. So let's play that. Strike. Defend. There we go. So. I think you start with a choke. Then you neutralize. Shiv. Shiv. Cloak and dagger. Defend. Strike. Kind of wanted to play in Venom, but I think it was better to do it the other way. As good as in Venom is, I don't think it was the right time here. Oh, now it really wants to. It really wants to be played, doesn't it? All right, Shiv, Shiv. We're not going to kill him this turn. Uh, let's quick slash, just see if we draw anything really good. And we didn't. So defend... Defend again. 
I'm gonna block 17 of his incoming 30. Puts three wounds into our deck or into our draw pile or our discard pile or whatever. Shiv Shiv, Cloak and Dagger, Shiv again. So close to killing him, but we're just not quite there. So you go defend, you go survivor. He's dead next turn. This deck needs some hitting power in a big way. Molten Egg, whenever you add an attack card to your deck, it is upgraded from here on out. That's pretty sweet. Another Infinite Blades actually could be really good. A Flying Knee could actually be really good as well. But I think you're going to go for a third Infinite Blades. And I think we don't want to upgrade that because we don't want to draw three Infinite Blades in the first turn. That's just not going to work for us very well. So here... Let's go Infinite Blades, Infinite Blades. And then I think you actually want to Cloak and Dagger and shiv this guy. We want to go cultist before we kill the chosen. The chosen's annoying too, but the cultist is also quite annoying. But at least we got two of our infinite blades off before we got hexed. That counts for something. Uh backflip. See what we draw. We did not draw our accuracy. Would love to get some more accuracy in the deck. That would be great. Uh, we got some stuff in there. Let's uh, let's play an outmaneuver here, I think. I want to be able to play more of my hand. 21 damage from him. Man, that's rough. All right, so... Play and Venom. We're not going to get... Uh, we're probably not going to get accuracy. We're not going to get accuracy. So, strike, strike. If we flying knee him, let's see, that's going to be eight damage. That'll take him down to six, and then he would take four poison. So it wouldn't kill him, but it would kill him if I go flying knee, cloak and dagger, shiv. There we go. So he's dead from poison. We still take, I think we're dead, actually. Yep, we're dead. <laughs> Ah, uh, man. Probably should have checked the damage totals before I played the hand. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for today's episode. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.